Hey guys, Aaron here. Today we're going to place in the rack and pinion on a Nissan Titan. Um, this procedure will be available for years 2004 through 2015. This particular video is a 2004 two-wheel drive, but the procedures are relatively similar to a Nissan Armada as well. Now, if you are four-wheel drive, you will have to do a couple extra steps, which is removing the front differential a little more difficult. I will post the um, instructions for a four-wheel drive in the description, but let's go ahead and get started with the tools you're gonna need to get the job done right. Okay, so here's the tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need an impact. You're gonna need a good hammer, half-inch ratchet, 14 millimeter wrench, 17 millimeter wrench, seven eighths and five sixteen wrenches. We're gonna be using a 24 millimeter, seven eighths, 19 millimeter, and a 17 millimeter socket, flat blade screw, uh, screwdriver, needle nose pliers, and a breaker bar. So let's go ahead and get with the first step that's needed. All right, so the first step is gonna be making sure that the wheel is fully centered. Make sure there's no tilt to it. Make sure it's just in the middle and you wanna align your wheels towards the front of the vehicle. Don't have them at an angle. Um, the brand new or remanufactured steering rack, which I'll show you in a little bit, is perfectly centered. If you pull one from a junkyard, you will have to center it to make sure that both tie rods are in the center of the rack. However, if you do buy a new one, um, it should be centered from the manufacturer. All right, so obviously the next step is gonna be jacking up the vehicle using a properly rated jack and jack stands. Use caution when doing so. Next step is gonna be removing the outer tie rods. What we wanna do first is just back off this nut. So when we take off the ball joint on the tie rod, we're able to spin the tie rod and remove it from the inner tie rod and the rack assembly. Once that nut is backed off, what we could do now is focus on removing the outer tie rod. To do that, take your 7 eighths um, socket and just loosen up this nut till it's even with the shaft of the ball joint on the tie rod. Once that's done, we're free to hit the, the, the nut or the shaft right here. What I like to do is make sure they're even so we don't score the nut. Take a hammer and just hit it once. It should come off relatively easy. And there we have it. So what you can do now is take your nut off, set it aside because we're going to reuse it. And there we are. Now the next step that I like to do is I like to um, count. What we're doing is just estimating the depth of the tie rod and how far it is on the inner tie rod. So what I like to do is when I remove it, I count how many times I spin it. That way when we go to install our new rack, we can get it pretty close before we head to the alignment shop and be able to drive the vehicle down there and the toe won't be off too much. So as you can see, I went ahead and spin that off. I counted 14 and a half spins um, till it came off. So when I install the new rack, I'll put 14 and a half spins on and then I'll install the outer tie rod to the knuckle right here. All right, so here we are on the passenger side of the vehicle. Uh, what we're gonna do is remove the outer tie rod just like we did with the driver. Um, then once we do that, we can work on removing the sway bar and that will give us access to the bolts that mount on the rack and pinion itself. All right, so we got both tie rods off and now what we're gonna do is focus on our sway bar. What you're gonna need is a, your 17 millimeter socket to remove the mounting straps right here. And then if you want, it's not mandatory, but it definitely helps out. You can go ahead and remove the sway bar links to completely take off the sway bar. That'll give you just some added clearance when you're under here, um, removing your rack. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'll show you what it looks like and what the access that you'll gain for removing the bolts. Alrighty, so we got our sway bar off and now we're ready to take off our rack, but before we do that, we're going to want to go ahead and drain um, all the fluid in the system because there are two lines going to the rack, system's full of uh, fluid. Let's go ahead, take some time and drain those lines. So I got my pan under here and what you're going to see is this hose right here goes directly to the rack and what we're going to do is we're going to take off that line first and let it drain and then the line behind that is our high pressure line which is right here and we'll need a 14 millimeter to take that off and in order for the fluid to drain out quickly we're going to go ahead and remove the cap off of the reservoir that's just going to allow gravity to do its thing and there won't be a vacuum in the system and we can get the job a lot done quicker as soon as this fluid comes out all right, so I got both lines off and all the fluid has came out of the system. Next, we're gonna remove this bolt right here, which holds on our steering shaft. 
Um, what we're going to do is take our 12 millimeter socket and we're going to remove it. Make sure your steering wheel is locked. That way this can't turn and nothing could be damaged or out of line. So we'll go ahead and remove that bolt. And what I've done before is taken a screwdriver and put it in this slot right here, which opens up the shaft a little bit larger. And it helps get the shaft off of, uh, or this, this coupling off of this shaft right here of the, of the rack. Just a little tip there um, because it is on really tight depending on the mileage and where you live you might have some problems getting this off so go ahead and do that and then we'll work on this bolt these bolts um, getting them removed and that's it okay so our steering shaft is off now we're going to focus on these three bolts um, it's always easiest to remove the nuts instead of the bolts or you know loosening the nuts is easier than loosening the bolt so we're going to start off on this side with our 7 8 wrench I believe a 21 or actually a 22 millimeter will fit as well and then on the back side we're gonna hold these bolts with a 5 16 wrench now one thing one thing is to be noted um, these bolts are on very 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 tight the factory torque spec is 121 foot pounds but this vehicle is an 04 I've done this twice now and I could say I had to use a torch both times and it's pretty tough so if you have a torch definitely get it out and start heating up these bolts they're on real tough, so um, I'm going to try out the breaker bar first. Hopefully that'll be enough to get them off. Um, and then after that, the rack is going to go ahead and swing on down. And we'll remove it and then put it on the bench. Alright, so we got the uh, old rack off and we have it compared to the new rack. Depending on where you buy it from, you may have to switch over a couple of things. Um, one of which being this line right here, this fitting, this barb fitting for the return hose. Mine actually does come with a new one. So that's pretty nice. There's an O-ring underneath this fitting too um, that you may have to swap out. Now, I've replaced this rack before and it's actually not too old. Um, I purchased this rack from O'Reilly Auto Parts. It is remanufactured as you can see. And it's been kind of hit or miss for these rack opinions as far as being good, lasting a long time um, through Cardone. Uh, Cardone remanufactures this rack. I went ahead and bought a brand new rack from the dealer. Um, quite a bit more expensive around six seven hundred dollars um, you can find them online for maybe a little bit cheaper this one's gonna run you about 250 to three I really don't feel like doing this again so that's why I went with the new one this time so um, this rack is centered like I said from the um, from the factory or from the dealer so we don't have to mess with centering it centering the shaft or anything like that so now we're just gonna throw it on um, and the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take these bolts we're going to put them in put them in through the frame hold the rack into place and then we're going to torque them down to 121 foot pounds that's the torque spec for these three bolts right here all right so we went ahead and torqued our bolts now everything is ready to put back on i'm going to go ahead and take the steering shaft and squeeze it back on put the bolt through it and on the back side the high pressure line does have an o-ring that you do need to replace your new rack should come with an o-ring this one did which is good um, and after that, we're going to go ahead and bleed the power steering system. All right, so now we're ready to add fluid. I went ahead and got everything torqued down if you want. And if you're looking for a torque specification, I'm going to include everything from the rack bolts to the tie rods to the wheel studs. I'm going to include all those torque specifications in the description. So go ahead and check that out. Now let's go ahead and add fluid to our reservoir. We're going to fill it up to the max line, start the engine. We're going to turn the wheels all the way to the left all the way to the right, shut the truck down, and then we're gonna recheck and most likely we're gonna probably have to add more fluid. Okay, so we're turning all the way to the right, all the way to the left. We're gonna shut it down and check the level in the reservoir. Now what you'll experience is a little bit of noise initially after you start it up, that's completely normal. And you can see there's definitely air bubbles in there. I'm gonna add a little more fluid and drive it around. Um, it's also really important to get your truck into the alignment shop as soon as possible because the tow will not be perfect, which is what I'm planning on doing right after this. So I hope this video has helped you out. If it has, please like and subscribe. If you guys got any comments or questions, leave something in the comment section. I'll do my best to help you out or get back to you as soon as I can. And that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and take care.